Welcome back to this next video. So in this next video, we're going to discuss causes of heart failure. And remember the main lesson from the previous video, heart failure simply means failure of the heart to pump enough blood around the circulation, a too low flow rate around the circulation. What can cause that? That's what we're now going to discuss. So um, there are four main causes. The first is hypertension, the second is valvulopathies, the third is cardiomyopathy, and the fourth is arrhythmias. And remember, I told you in the previous video that one of my previous misunderstandings about heart failure is that it instantly meant that that person had cardiomyopathy. And we'll elaborate on how that is not the case in this video. So let's, however, begin with hypertension. So there are two main forms of hypertension. There is systemic hypertension, which is by far the most common, and then there is the much rarer pulmonary hypertension. Uh, and I'm abbreviating hypertension down to HTM. Hopefully you realise that already. So systemic hypertension is often just a idiopathic phenomenon. To give it its full name, it's called essential hypertension. It means that for reasons that actually science still does not properly understand, the pressure in the systemic arterial system is too high. And this happens in a lot of people as they get older. In particular, if you are um, overweight or if you smoke, you are particularly at risk of developing systemic hypertension. And this can be really bad. Some people will have really, really horrifically high pressures within their systemic arterial system. You know, uh, a lot of people watching this video will be students, so young and healthy. People with essential hypertension, their blood pressures can sometimes be twice the pressure that you currently have in your systemic arterial system. It's quite incredible the pressures that some people's blood pressure can get up to. And as I say, it's often an idiopathic phenomenon. Science still doesn't really know what the reason it happens. We are very good at treating it, however. We have a huge number of drugs that can lower blood pressure. Now, it would be rare for someone to suddenly get heart failure from hypertension because hypertension is often a very slow onset thing. It gets worse and worse over years. It's not an acute thing and therefore often, because it happens very slowly, the heart often just gets used to it uh, as it goes on. It can lead to a cardiomyopathy, which we'll discuss in uh, part number three, causes of heart failure. Um, but in itself, it doesn't usually often cause uh, heart failure without first leading to the cardiomyopathy. However, an example where it could, let's say someone has really high blood pressure. Let's say that they are usually taking religiously free drugs, triple therapy to bring their blood pressure down. Let's say they're on Ramipril, 10 milligrams, bisop not bisoprolol, bisoprolol is not a good antihypertensive. Let's say they're on Ramipril 10, amlodipine 10, and bendroflumathiazide 2.5. So that is triple therapy for hypertension. Uh, and let's say that that usually leads to their blood pressure being controlled. Now, let's say one day they foolishly run out of their medicines so they can't take them and they don't take them. Therefore, they just think, oh, it doesn't matter. What, what might then happen is their blood pressure might skyrocket through the roof. Let's say it goes up to a systolic of 220, whereas it's usually nicely controlled at 130. That might precipitate heart failure because their blood pressure has suddenly risen from a low level to a massively high level, and now the left ventricle might not be able to actually cope with pumping blood into that hypertensive system. It just might not be able to pump enough blood, and that could lead to heart failure. So systemic hypertension, if it's fast onset, for instance, if someone forgets to take their antihypertensive medicines, uh, can lead to heart failure. Um, pulmonary hypertension, let's now talk about that. Pulmonary hypertension is much, much rarer. It means high blood pressure in the pulmonary arterial system. There are lots of different causes of this. I don't want to go into uh, all of them, but one of the main ones is it can be idiopathic too. So I'll put that up there, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, primary pulmonary hypertension. It's a very rare disease, but it can happen. Much more commonly is for it to happen secondary to lung disease. So if people have horrific lung diseases, what can happen is that that destroys all the capillaries um, within the lung tissue. So maybe a small pictures uh, needed. So if we just draw a little picture of the lungs here, so there's the right lung, there's the left lung. Remember, what's happening is the 
our, here's the pulmonary arterial trunk. It's splitting into the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. These split down into much, much smaller vessels, and these smaller vessels eventually will give rise to arterioles, which will give rise to capillaries. Now, if you have some horrific lung disease that is destroying your lung tissue, what will happen is you will lose those capillaries, and let's say you lose loads of them, then where is all the blood that's go coming from this arterial system going to actually go anymore? Well, it's not got enough capillaries to go into. There are only a few now, so there's much, much higher resistance to the flow. And that can then lead to uh, hypertension in this arterial system. So lung diseases that can cause that really advanced emphysema, as which occurs in COPD, can cause that. Because remember, emphysema causes holes in your lungs. It's hideous. If you've ever seen a CT with really bad emphysema, there's just loads of holes everywhere. It just leads to destruction of the lung tissue and it's just replaced by great big air holes, holes full of air. And that's what emphysema fundamentally is. And that's a component of COPD. So remember, COPD is smoking-related disease of the lung. Um, and there's two components to it. Emphysema, which is all the lung tissue breaking down and just having loads of holes instead of actual lung tissue. Uh, and then chronic bronchitis, which is narrowing of the actual airways. Emphysema is the part that will lead to pulmonary hypertension. Other diseases that can cause the interstitial lung disease. So let's give an example. IPF is an example of the interstitial lung disease. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It is a disease that we do not understand at all well. What happens here is that the lung tissue is just replaced by scar tissue and the scar tissue is so fibrotic that it tends to just sort of pull the uh, alveoli huge. Um, so you end up with a huge number of holes in your lungs as well with IPF. So you end up with loss of lung tissue with IPF too because the scar tissue that forms just sort of contracts the lung tissue that is there and pulls it away and you just end up with bigger and bigger air spaces in the bottom of your lungs, especially in IPF. Um, and that has a very distinctive appearance on CT. It looks different to emphysema, very different to emphysema. It's called honeycombing that you see on CT. But again, the point is both of these lead to destruction of lung tissue, destruction of capillaries, uh, and can lead to pulmonary hypertension. Now, pulmonary hypertension can then lead to the right ventricle not being able to pump um, blood against this pressure. Remember, the right ventricle isn't supposed to have to pump against a very high pressure. The pressure in the pulmonary system is usually tiny compared to the pressure in the uh, systemic arterial system. So if this goes up, and it can go up hugely to levels almost as high as the systemic arterial system in pulmonary hypertension, uh, then the right ventricle just never was made to cope with that, and it won't be able to cope with it. So you will then get uh, failure of the right ventricle to pump enough blood into the pulmonary system and that will lead to not enough blood going around the circulation so it will lead to heart failure. So systemic hypertension would lead to specifically left heart failure again that just means heart failure where the problem is on the left and pulmonary hypertension would lead to right heart failure again just heart failure where the problem is on the right. Um, so that's cause number one. We'll have a break there and in the next video we'll discuss cause number two.